Yes, I speak English. Ladies and gentlemen, and we are that very we are happy to be uh, here now as I'm in Vienna. So we're going to and I'm also very happy, happy and much more happy that you are here. A lot of people, first one friend of mine, and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for being here. I have the honor to speak a little bit about the heritage of the microphone, please. <laughs> thank you very much. As most of you know, we have a big grace uh, uh, and mercy and, and the chance to work together with Viktor Frankl for a long time and to know him for about 11 years personally. So this also means uh, a big responsibility in witnessing what probably might have been his ideas and about telling you uh, how he possibly would have liked logotherapy and existential analysis to develop in the future. Between this picture and this person are 20 years, as you see, also of my weight, I'm sorry. But, uh, Dog therapy, as you know, not only means fun, it also means a lot of work. So I would like to mention an article that probably also many of you will know. It is called The Degorification of Logotherapy and was published in the book Therapy in the Praxis. It was an opening address of Viktor Frankl at the First World Congress of Logotherapy in San Diego in 1980. So, this uh, uh, is a very interesting article that I think all of you should read, especially the parts that uh, were mentioned uh, by Frankl in the thinking about the future of logotherapy. And here he writes, I am not a prophet to foresee the future of logotherapy, even less a guru, he never wanted to be a guru, to decree what its future should be. You see the inference of the polyclinic in the winter time. And today, very often people mention, what did Viktor Frankl want us to be? And I dare to tell you that Dr. Frankl never, ever wanted someone of us to be something or somewhat in the future as a logotherapist. He was uh, calling us to be responsible, to be well educated, and he wanted the individuality of each person that is here now to develop logotherapy and to make it applicable in the contemporary times, in the contemporary state of art of medicine and psychology. Oh, sorry, a bit slowly. Skulpe. So he also said in this article, I never, I, I have neither an interest in creating robots nor in raising parrots that just rehash the master's voice. You heard it from our colleague from Nigeria today. But I do wish for the future that the cause of logotherapy be taken over and carried out by independent and inventive, innovative and creative spirits. So we were talking about the term logotherapy all the time and it is also my responsibility and I can tell you, Viktor Frankl personally very often told to me, Mr. Mori, please tell the people, do not forget the term existential analysis, however we can implement it in our publications and in our uh, presentations. It's always hard to say in logotherapy and existential analysis. So this leads us to the problem that was mentioned already today. It might be also be necessary not to, to replace the term logotherapy, but to extend it in the very important formulation of so-called meaning-centered psychotherapy. I will tell you some story about that. This is not Viktor Frankl, this is Wagner Jaurek, famous Austrian psychiatrist. I'm sorry, we still do not have a, a Viktor Frankl medal, but maybe in future we have. There is a Wagner Jaurek medal as an honoring medal for the famous doctors. And Viktor Frankl always said logotherapy and existential analysis are two sides of one and the same medal. So please don't forget existential analysis. However, you have ideas to implement it in your presentations and in your publications. We have an interesting development uh, all over the world of many big things.
thinkers, of people from, uh, that are here now and are doing a lot of good work in developing uh, the meaning-centered psychotherapy, in developing the, the research in logotherapy and existential analysis, in medicine, in psychology, in pedagogy, and so on. This is wonderful work. And Professor Bill Breitbart, maybe someone of you knows uh, Breitbart and Jimmy Holland. I like them very much because I'm interested very much in psycho-oncology, in working logotherapy with cancer patients, which is a very interesting work. Yes, <laughs> it's cool. Have to slow down. A bit, a bit. Sorry, excuse me. Are, are you fine? Okay. And it is interesting if you they're working in the Sloan Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. I've visited them and I have met them at many congresses in the last years. And Professor Breitbart, he is offering the term meaning-centered psychotherapy and he does not really say he has invented it and he always quotes Viktor Frankl and talks about Frankl but we should take care not to lose this, uh, this term and this uh, formulation so we should care about this in Austria fortunately we have some opportunities that something happens, what I really appreciate and would appreciate for the future, and I can only assist in strong thoughts, the, the words, and, and support what my, uh, my speaker, Dr. Stigmeier, before me was talking. We must try that logotherapy is not something that everybody can do who is thinking about the meaning of life. This is a very dangerous situation, meanwhile, really. And so in Austria, we have famous Professor Siegfried, thank you, Siegfried Kasper, he's chief of psychiatry hospital for many years now in, in Vienna, and he already supported Viktor Frankl in giving his lectures when Frankl was nearly 90 years old. And Professor Gisela Gutmann, uh, uh, chief of former psychology department, you see the general hospital and the old university. So we have still, with uh, Dr. Badiani and with my person still offer uh, seminars and lectures of, about logotherapy in the Medical University of Vienna since 20 years now. We are very proud about that. We are uh, 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 connected with Donau University, Donau University in Krems of the Educational Institute, Abile for example, and we also have Sigmund Freud University in Vienna that teaches logotherapy too on academic level. And of course, in our neighbor countries, we have many institutes like in Tübingen and other institutes who are working on university level, and this is very important. Um, just some two or three slides. I think, personally, um, and I wrote it in the title, it's a personal view. I'm a practitioner. I'm not such a very academic uh, man. I'm practicing since 20 years with patients every day. And I see the success and the therapeutic and the medical, also the medical effect, what you can do with good experienced work in logotherapy and existential analysis in pedagogic, psychological affairs, and even in psychiatric diseases, in cooperation with medical doctors, of course. So I think what we need, and this cactus is a symbol, because I think the logotherapeutic community is very harsh at some moments. Some people are working together very good, but some are very bad enemies. And I try, maybe my contribution is that I am giving you a little sort of family therapy for the logotherapeutic family, I hope. We need, in my opinion, diversity, diversity. We need individuality of all our persons and institutes, but we also need common goals. We still need meaning, despite we are the one who offer meaning or who help to detect meaning. We need cooperation, constructive work, a high scientific level, benevolent style of communication with each other. We here probably will not have the problem, but I would like and I would be happy if we can invite for the next meetings, for the next Congress, all those friends and peoples from logotherapy scenery who are not here this time. I think this is important. We should respect each other and to be committed, not only in the interest of science, but in the interest of our patients and clients. So I come to the end. 
Uh, Victor Frankl wrote himself these are words of Frankl. I concluded my first book with the sentence that logotherapy is a no man's land, and yet what a land of promise. This was 35 years ago, wrote Frankl. Now we hit 67 years ago now, nearly 70 years after he spoke about this. In the meantime, the no man's land has become inhabited, and the proof, said Frankl, thereof is this Congress. I would dare to say it is also, thank you, it is also this Congress, again a reproof of the possibility and of the chance that we have as strong individual persons. So I think what we need is teamwork, more teamwork, more teamwork than ever before, and the technical support about it, it was spoken about this with Skype, with electronic uh, connections. Uh, talking together, coming together, even this wonderful meeting that Professor Battini now is here, and I would like to congratulate. This is excellent, and I didn't expect this. I must uh, honestly say it is excellent what was happening here, and I have attended a lot of great congresses in the last years, and I thank you very much. And really. Um, I think uh, community, no, not I think, sorry, Frankl thinks, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's better to quote Viktor Frankl than to quote Mori. He said in The Doctor and the Soul on the meaning of love, so we need not to love each other, but maybe to respect each other. Community in its turn confers existential meaning upon personal uniqueness and singularity. But community can also be a rich field of human experience. And I, th I think if we dare and if we are encouraged now by this Congress, by this meeting, by all our personal contacts that we have now in Vienna and that we may probably have in other cities and other countries in the future, we have such a strong power and we need not to become a sort of a movement. I think we have to work individually but connected together and to have a synergistic effect and not too much to bring in historical opposite positions that I think, like in as, a, as a development of a child, we meanwhile now probably have overcome. And I would, would like to finish and to close my presentation with a sort of impression, um, if you, then this is my opinion, and I think it would also be Victor Frankl's opinion, if you have an independent, inventive, innovative, creative spirit, not only mind, not only intellect, but this spirit, and you know it, it's from the word of the degurification of logotherapy and existential analysis. I believe all of you will be the logotherapists of the future, good logotherapists of the future, and well-educated logotherapists and people who can make this world better from the power that we have and from the responsibility that we have in our time. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias.